All right then, my friends. So at the time of recording this video, the Gemini 3 model is only available in the Gemini CLI to either AI Ultra members, which is about £120 a month in the UK, or API key users. You can also use it if you authenticate with your Vertex API key as well. Now, if you're watching this in the future, it might be that Google have rolled out access to the Gemini 3 model to all users with a standard Google account. But even then, I'm guessing there's gonna be usage limits. And by having an API key set up, you're in control of the usage without those caps. Also, any future models or other services might require an API key as well. So learning how to do this is still gonna be beneficial. In fact, later in the course, we'll be using the same key to generate images in the project with NanoBanana. So then in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to set up a new API key in the Google AI Studio, and then authenticate with it in the CLI to use the Gemini 3 model. Now, if you don't wanna use Gemini 3 and you're happy sticking to 2.5, then feel free to skip this lesson. But for the rest of us, the first thing we need to do is head to the Google AI Studio at aistudio.google.com. And you should be able to sign in with your regular Google account. Now inside this studio, you can chat with Google's Gemini's models, including Gemini 3, much like you can with OpenAI models in ChatGPT, and you can build apps in a vibe coding session as well. But you can also use the studio to generate API keys for your project, and those API keys can be used for the Gemini CLI to authenticate. So to make one, you have to click on this get API key link down here, which is gonna take you to the API key page. But before we make one, we also have to make a new project so that key can be assigned to the project and build appropriately. So let's click on the projects link and then click on the create new project button in the top right up here. When we do that, we get asked to give this project a name, which I'm going to call Gemini CLI course. And then we can hit the create button. All right, so once that's created, you're gonna see it right here. And over on the right, you're gonna see that for this project, we're automatically assigned the free tier. And the free tier is much like we've been using so far in the Gemini CLI. We can use Gemini 2.5 with some usage limits set in place. But we wanna use Gemini 3, which we have to pay for by setting up the billing for this project. So to do that, you can click on this setup billing link right here. And when you do that, it's gonna take you to the Google Cloud console where you can link a billing account to the project. Now, if you don't have a Google Cloud billing account set up, then I think there should be an option here to create one. And actually, when you do first create one, you get $300 in free credits for the first three months, I think it is. So for that period, you don't have to pay a thing. Anyway, I already have a billing account created, so I can click on the link billing account option here and select my NetNinja billing account. Once I've done that, it's gonna take me to the billing page where I can do things like set alerts to prevent me overspending and that kind of thing. But there's really nothing else I need to do here. So I can just cross this tab off and then back on the studio, I can refresh and hopefully we're gonna see the new project is now on tier one, a paid plan. And how much you pay depends on how much you use the API key with Gemini CLI or whatever other application might use the key. Now, I've actually got a page open from the Gemini API docs over here, which shows the pricing of using different models. And Gemini 3 is right here. So you're charged separately for input and output, where the input is your prompts and context with the prompts, and the output is what the model responds with, including all of its internal thinking and reasoning as well. And currently, these are charged per 1 million tokens, which would take some pretty heavy usage in the Gemini CLI to reach. Anyway, back in the studio, we've set up a project and we've linked it to a billing account so that now we can make an API key for the project. Now to do that, head to the API keys page again, and then click on the create button here to make one. We have to give the key a name, which I'm gonna call Gemini CLI. And we also have to link it to a project. So. I'll link it to the one we just made, then hit the button down here to create it. That's just gonna take a few seconds, but then when it's done, you can copy your new key by clicking on the copy icon that you're gonna see over here. And now that we've got that, we can head back to the CLI. All right, so I'm still in a chat session right here. And the first thing I wanna do is re-authenticate using my API key instead of my Google account. And I can do that using the auth command and just running that. Then I can select the second option, which is to use a Gemini API key and press enter. After that, it asks us to paste in the API key and press enter. So let's do that. 
And by the way, make sure you keep this key secret. Don't share it with anyone. You can see mine on the screen, but as soon as I've finished recording this series, I'm going to delete it so you won't be able to use it. Anyway, press enter. And now the CLI is going to use our API key to send requests and get responses. Now, by default, the Gemini 3 model isn't enabled in the CLI at the time of recording. And I can show you that by using the model command and hitting enter. When I do that, you can see none of these options are Gemini 3. And it also says at the top, we need to enable the preview features in the settings to enable it. Now, this might not be the case when you're using Gemini CLI in the future. This is just the case right now as I'm recording this video. Anyway, let's escape out of this now and then run the settings command. Now, I'm gonna update this option right here on a workspace level so that I'm only enabling these preview features and therefore Gemini 3 within this project. So I'm gonna to tab to this menu down here and then select workspace. Then I'm gonna enable the preview features up here, which is the first option in my settings by pressing enter. And we can see that now it's going to true. And then I can escape out of this again and run the model command once more. And now at the top, we can see that Gemini 3 is enabled, awesome. So now in these options, you can either select auto or pro to use Gemini 3. If you select auto, then depending on the task, the system chooses the most appropriate model. If it's a very quick one or a simple task, then it uses the two point flash model, I think. If it's more complex, then it's gonna use the Gemini 3 model if you enabled it. As long as you're within your daily limits, then it falls back to 2.5 pro. If you select the pro option, then it's gonna bypass that flash model and jump right to Gemini 3 regardless of the task. So I'm gonna keep mine on auto. All right, so now let's quickly test if this worked by pasting in a prompt that says, can you examine the code base and explain this project to me? Then I'm gonna hit enter and let it do its thing. All right, so for me, that took a little longer than before when I was using the 2.5 model, but I think there was a bit more reasoning and thinking going on from this model. And if I scroll right up to the top of the response, you're gonna see a little message saying that the model responding is Gemini 3 Pro Preview. So I know this is all working now. And I was actually really pleased with its evaluation and response when I read it. So then we've created an API key, we've authenticated with it, we've enabled the preview features in the CLI for this project, and now we're using the Gemini 3 model, which I'll continue to use through the rest of this series. In the next lesson, we're gonna to return to commands, but this time we're gonna make our own custom command instead of using the built-in ones.